Now the meshes have been made in both chunks and masks applied so I should be able to come down to any of these images and have a mask applied to chunk one and let's go to chunk two and select an image there we go masks have been applied you can even go down here and hit the little mask icon looks good there and looks good there now let's move the images with masks from chunk one to chunk two so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to chunk two drop down the menu go to cameras and then right click on nope sorry come down to the bottom here select all the images so control a select all the images right click and then on the mark in this right click menu go to move cameras chunk one so you're moving it from chunk two to chunk one that's why chunk two is kind of grayed out and you're gonna move 84 cameras and that's how many are in chunk two and there you go so now there's no more cameras in chunk two you can select chunk two right click and you can delete it where is it remove remove chunks right there and there you go now all the cameras Oh, 191 cameras are in chunk one. And let's click on the little mask and so it can show all the images. And then we rerun it again, but this time with a different setting. So we'll go back up to workflow, align photos. Here we want to go to high. So accuracy is set to high. And the most important part is go under advanced, click on this again, all the uh, point limits are all set to zero but the one we want is constrain features by mask make sure that's turned on along with the adaptive camera so those have to be clicked on for the masks to work hit OK and then let it process and then we'll see the result from this see you in a bit I'm back and Agisoft finished up making the dense cloud we have to kinda of come up to the top here and click on the dense cloud view and you can see it calculates it in and did a fantastic job and it aligned the top and the bottom still in good alignment they're combining it and if you zoom in you can see the individual points still in there but no floaters outside the shape of the object the silhouette so this is a pretty clean combine of those two separate chunks that we initially started with. It's time to build that mesh. So go back to workflow, build mesh, and what we're going to do is going to go to surface types is arbitrary, uh, the source uh, data is going to be dense cloud, and then face count. To help build the mask, we had it around you know two million. And again, this is a really simple object what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to custom again and we're gonna go three mil there we go to build our final model and then under advanced all that the default that looks good hit OK and then uh, we'll let this build out and it will continue on to the next step alright see you guys soon Now it's done building the model from the dense cloud. If we come up to the top, we got this new icon that shows up and that's going to be the shaded texture mode. Click on that and you can see it slightly changes. Um, I'm also going to come up to the top and turn off the show cameras so we don't have that in the background distracting us. And there it is. We've got the top, the bottom, and everything looks really good and if we go to the next icon on the right we've got the solid so you can really take a look at the model itself looks pretty good and then the next one on the right is wireframe where you can kinda of zoom in and actually see the individual triangles looks good I'm gonna back up go back to texture and shaded mode and officially Agisoft hasn't built a texture yet, 
So we have to go through that uh, step. So it's a little deceiving. If we go back to workflow and say build texture, this is what we want to do. Um, mapping mode, we want to leave this to generic. And then blending mode, this is where you're going to have to play around. I usually play, if I click on it, uh, I play with mosaic or average. These are the two I play with. And it all depends on how your image is aligned and how the texture looks like on your model at this stage. Fine. Sometimes mosaic looks fine. Sometimes average looks fine. Sometimes mosaic looks a little blurry to me sometimes. So I will use average. It's kind of up to you to kind of play with these settings to figure out which one's going to work for your model. And this process relatively goes fast compared to other processes in Agisoft. So it doesn't take extra effort to play around with these two settings to see which one you get better, uh, better results. So I'm going to pick average. And then pretty much default for all this is fine. And then I'm going to hit OK. And then it's going to go through that process of building that uh, texture. It's also going to build UVs that are very similar to automatic mapping inside of Maya. So we'll let this crank and then uh, we'll move on to the next step again. Now that's done and what we want to do is we want to make sure that this model and the texture are ready for export. So there's one more step we got to do and that's to make sure this box is in the correct orientation. And the way you check that is over here in the bottom right hand corner you can see the top of the box and looking at the XYZ coordinates is pointing down. So you can see Y is pointing straight down in the scene. If we rotate you can see the orientation of that. So we need to orient, orient this object correctly for the 3D space. So again, Z is going to be uh, forward facing for the model. So we got to work on that. I'm going to come all the way up to the top and there's this one icon up here that says reset view. You're going to click on it. And then that's going to give you the correct orientation in the scene. So you can see Y is up, uh, X is off to the side, and Z is straight ahead. So if I move this a little bit, you can see that orientation there. So I'll just hit reset and there it is. So now we got to move this box to the correct orientation. So it's basically almost putting this box in, into pivot mode and ro rotating it in that particular uh, tool. So we're going to come up to the top and then right up here you want to say rotate object icon. Click on that. You can see the that little bounding box disappears or that render region. And now we just click on either the Z and the Y and the and the and the X and I want to hit click on the red line which is the X and just rotate that around and that seems like the work for me again you might have to do it a little different for your particular object I'm gonna grab the X or Z I should say and just rotate that just a little bit perfect that looks like it's all lined up forward facing and then I'm going to click on, again, another icon. I'm going to go all the way to the navigation and then boom, bring the region back. And then now this is ready to export out. We're going to go to File. We're going to say Export Model. And then you're going to pick where you want to send it. So again, we want to make sure we send it out. Let's make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see the list of file formats. You can see we can go FBX with this if we want. Uh, I found that OBJ does just fine and it's a pretty clean uh, format. So that's the one I'm going to roll with. And I'm just going to call it Scan Box Demo. And I'm going to hit Save. And then it's going to come up with uh, the export model parameters. And we want to export the texture because we generated that. And again, it's going to, it made its own UVs for it. But again, it's very, um, it's very chaotic. It's very automatic mapped. And then what we want to make sure is we don't really want to use these other settings because they do cause problems uh, sometimes. The best one we've, uh, I've 
played around with and recommended is that you export as a JPEG and that gives the best results and it's gonna be full quality on that so it shouldn't be a problem hit OK and it's gonna generate the model and that texture and UVs we'll see the results from this in a second now it's done we come over here and you can see if I grab this we've got our OBJ and then we've got our texture and you can see again very chaotic very automatic mapped and it's uh, UV distribution but this is enough to get us going uh, to the next step so now we've gone through the process of building our model and making a texture for it uh, the next step is to actually go in and make a retopologized um, version of this model and reproject the texture onto the retopologized and re UV'd object. Now, there's a couple methods for that. We can use ZBrush, but sometimes ZBrush works good for very organic models, but not nothing that's hard surface modeling. Um, and it, it sometimes has a hard time or the the mesh doesn't look right if you want ultimate control you really want to do it in a program like Maya where you actually build it from the model from scratch and do the UVs you usually get the best result so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, OBJ into Maya retopologize it and UV it and I want to show you a process that will allow us to bring in this 3 million poly object without Maya sitting there and bogging down because that's a really big problem in Maya is all those polygons. So now we'll move on to the next uh, step in the process.